Hello to everyone! My name is Andreas Grussel, I'm a vocal coach, and today I will react to and analyze Nightwish singing Ghost Love Score. Look at this crowd and that stage. Now this intro had the typical movie score feeling to it, like Pirates of the Caribbean. And the drums sound really crisp and boomy, while the keyboard strings can still be heard well in the mix. Very nice. Guitar now. I love the music. Pretty cool music. She obviously likes it as well. Now with the guitar coming in, we had a complete change in rhythm and mood of the song. Very driving and heavy guitar sound. A bit like the energy that was already present in the beginning was focused and amplified. Love it. Look at that crowd. Very nice. Love her voice. Again, a complete change in rhythm. And Flo's voice is just perfect for symphonic metal. She's simply an amazing singer. Actually, she was also a teacher using the CVT method. In the days I was still uh, teaching a lot, I used a vocal method called vo um, uh, Complete Vocal Technique by Catherine Sutherland. So including CVT terms will probably come closest to her own understanding of the sound she makes. And in CVT terms, to my understanding, this headier, thinner vocal fold sound in the beginning would probably be called a neutral sound. And that more chesty sound that felt a little held back would be called curbing. And I really like how she contrasted those two sound impressions in order to build and release musical tension. While always keeping the tone crystal clear. Great support.
another. Such a great piece of music. Now in that second vocal part, Flora started to use some more powerful tones. In order to build the intensity of the song. So she went out to brighter calling timbre with an intermediate vocal fold shape. Or in CVT terms, reduce density edge. And let me say, I love how smoothly she transitioned in between those sounds and how the musical feeling changes with the overtones in her voice. Beautiful. The clapping. Love her voice. Now this part seemed to be more conversational. Silent from the deep came to me. And sound wise had a bit of a late 80s, early 90s pop rock piece. About the dream of of an angel without care. Like Roxette. I don't know where you're going. Or hard. And did you hear that nice run there? Amazing. Guitar solo. Cool sound. Really nice guitar solo. I love how it plays with the motive from the vocal melody that Floor sang before. And the guitar sound is very straightforward. Nothing fancy or heavy like at the beginning. Good old 80s guitar sound with a bit of Brian May in it. Love it. Getting a bit silent on stage for an interlude now. Really cool atmosphere.
далеко. Drama comes back. Yeah. interlude with strings and choir parts. Feels again a bit like in a movie. And if you don't know the song, you might even think it's over. But obviously it's not. Isn't it cool that you can really deviate from that typical pop song format and people still love it? Really nice. Much fuller vocal sound than before. In CVT terms, that would be called more metallic sounds. Overdrive. An edge. So what it is, it's thicker vocal folds and better closure and certain settings in the vocal tract combined with apilaryngeal narrowing and this really builds the song and also makes it possible for the guitar to play more aggressively without covering the voice. Love it. Love the back and forth in between keyboard strings and the rest of the band. And that riff reminds me a bit of a motive in the Home Alone 2 soundtrack. And then Floor shows more of her vocal versatility. First, this really low, layering, thin, heady sound, neutral in CVT. And then some false vocal fold distortion. And this is really so different from how Tanya sang that part. Which version do you like better? Let me know in the comments below. Oh, nice. 
Oh man, this part is so engaging. Her called out vocals. The guitars and drums. And the keyboard. The crowd obviously feels the same way. And then the contrast with more heady neutral sounds. Like in Tanya's version. Really cool. us her full clean sound spectrum here from breathy but chesty sounds to a fuller but held back timbre to a calling quality that is on the bright side to really intense bright high frequency top notes Plus the full instrumental load of these amazing musicians. <laughs> Definitely the climax of the song. And this gorgeous musical motive again. <laughs> Love it. It's great to be up there. Really nice. What an ending. The whole band was just amazing. Great drummer. Great guitarist. Great bass player. Great keyboarder. And of course, an amazing singer. The atmosphere there must have been incredible. And musically, I found it interesting that the choir part at the end was still present, but not as loud as in other versions I've heard.
personally, I feel this gave a lot more room to the instrument. Good choice. Absolutely stunning performance, probably a key moment in festival history. Now the obligatory question I'm asked all of the time, Tanya or Floor? Of course, that is a matter of taste, but personally, I simply love Floor's vocals. <laughs> What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want me to react to a certain singer, song or band, please also let me know in the comments below. Plus, if you liked this video, please smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. Okay, great. That's it for today with Nightwish and Ghost Love Score. I'd love to see you next time again. Meanwhile, take care. Bye bye.